Hi, this is Rhett with TestingTheory.com, and today I want to talk to you about A-B testing for UX designers and why UX designers love A-B testing. If you've ever had your designs changed by management or criticized by those from above who don't have a background in UX, if you've ever wondered how you can make your designs better and be sure of the changes you're making because you're not sure which changes actually matter to your visitors, then A-B testing is your solution. Today I want to walk you through why A-B testing is loved by UX designers everywhere and how as a UX designer you can get more value for your clients and do better things by you comparing A-B testing with your UX designs. First, what is A-B testing? A-B testing is simply using tools, data, and analytics to understand if the changes, the visual changes or the UX changes are valuable to the visitors. And we're understanding that value by measuring the end behavior we're trying to influence. So if the end behavior improves, then we know that the value of those UX designs were important. And the A-B testing and the A-B testing tools allow us to verify that. Good UX seeks to improve the visitor experience and to help the visitor experience be smoother and easier and better with the outcome of helping the visitors get what they want and the business get what they want. And that's why A-B testing and UX design are a match made in heaven because they're both seeking for the same outcome. They're both trying to improve the visitor experience by using the tools and the data to verify that the UX design is working. UX design is the creation of the visitor experience and A-B testing is the measurement and validation of that same user experience. By using A-B testing as a UX designer, you're able to verify what works and get more value. I wanna take a minute and read a couple paragraphs from a blog on medium.com where a UX designer was lamenting about the weaknesses of just doing UX design by itself without a tool like A-B testing. And also he explained how doing A-B testing helped him solve some of the problems that he had. Here's what he says. As a designer, probably at some point you struggle with minor, however still crucial design decisions. Which color should I pick for that button? Should this be a one column layout or a multi-column? Should I include some icons along with these texts? Where should I place this form? You can see the UX designer is struggling with the decisions that he has to make. He has all kinds of ideas, but he needs to know what are the best ideas that he should put into the experience. He goes on to say, you can somewhat answer these questions based on your previous experience or on the community knowledge out there, but the truth is you can't be sure how well it will perform without testing it first. Unfortunately for those kinds of questions, usability testing or other similar research techniques won't be enough to help you. And the risk of making a wrong decision can get even worse when you're dealing with a redesign. How certain can you be that the new version will perform better than the current version? You might end up dropping important business success metrics even without knowing why. As you have a redesign or a new experience, you can never know for sure if something is better until you put it with your actual visitors and measure the behavior with those actual visitors. I wanna read one more thing from this blog and then we'll talk more about it. He says, so that is why A-B testing is important. You can increase the certainty on your design decisions while minimizing the risk for your company. Besides, we as designers constantly have our decisions questioned by the hippos, the highest paid person's opinion, or other professionals that think design is only a matter of beauty. With testing, we can move beyond these, these guesses, beliefs, and opinions, even our own. Bye-bye, ego. I love that because testing enables the UX designer to have confidence in the design they're creating, to push back the hippo or the manager or whoever's challenging the design because it doesn't look good to them, because then you have data saying it's good. You have actual visitors who have responded to the design positively, and you can present the data and say, this design is better, and I made it, and here's the data that proves it. And so it empowers the UX designer to have data to make the decisions and to fight the battle so that it's not based on people's opinions. And that's one of the main reasons why UX designers love A-B testing. The first reason I would say is that it gives them data to back their designs. If they have a winning design, we know that based on the data. And the other thing I would call out here is that it kind of pairs the left brain with the right brain. A lot of UX designers live in that right brain world where they're creating and they're making new stuff. And the left brain, the measurement and the data behind all that is, is what pairs so nicely with the UX designer where you can get an A-B tester who knows data and a UX designer in the same room and they can collaborate and brainstorm together. That is when the magic happens. The second reason why UX designers love A-B testing that we've talked about is because you can actually learn what influences the, the behavior of your visitors. When you know what works because you've learned it by testing it, you have more confidence in moving forward with that thing. The third reason why UX designers love A-B testing is because you really can win every time. Now, I don't mean this to say you'll always have winning experiences, but for the most part, if you design all the variations and any of the variations win, then you have won. If you design a control that's amazing, 
and you can't beat the control, you already designed the control and so you're still winning. And so you just get more data to validate that your design is better in the first place. And so again, this is how UX designers win every time and they prove themselves because they're making the designs that win. The fourth reason why UX designers love A-B testing is because it reduces the pressure to find the best solution. If you're not testing, what happens is the designer will create one solution and they will cross their fingers and hope that with the launch that everything works okay. And if conversions go down or if the, the lead signups tank, then people will blame the new experience. And so you're putting all your eggs in one basket. You're, you're relying on that one thing to win. But with A-B testing, you don't have to rely on that one experience. You can create multiple experiences. And even if they all lose, it's a temporary loss. You learn from it and then you move on and you make some new experiences based on what you learned. And so you're never putting all your eggs in one basket and you're moving quickly enough to learn what works. That's a massive safety net for the UX designer. They can never fail because they're always learning from their designs and the risk of failure is so greatly reduced. The fifth reason why UX designers love A-B testing is because it allows them to design more, not less. If you're making five variations of a single experience, you're designing more, you're being more creative, you're putting more thought into it. If you are only doing one version, you spend a lot of time making the one version and tweaking it and fine tuning it, but you're really just doing one thing. And so it's less creative, it's less fun because you're not creating as many variations. So designers love A-B testing because they get to design more and create more. The sixth reason why UX designers love A-B testing is because they get to go faster with iteration. Rather than just putting a design out there and shipping off development, you know that you're going to be iterating. And so as a UX designer, you can learn one thing and then iterate and learn something else. And so that speed that comes with doing good A-B testing allows you to start iterating. And then when you're iterating, you can be learning more and more. So those are the reasons why UX designers love A-B testing. And there's probably more. These are just a few that I've seen. But the reality is with A-B testing, you can challenge the designs that you're making. You can create things to test and learn about it. We've tested everything from the look and style of a link, a very small change, like, hey, should they be this color or this type of underline? And you know what we found is that there's a lot of industry articles about the links and how they should be displayed. And so if we would have relied only on that industry knowledge, we would have missed out because we found that by changing the way that we display links on one of our pages or one of our sections, we were able to increase conversions and usage of those links. And so even with a very small change, a UX designer can be strategic and creative in coming up with better solutions. And the fun thing is we can also test in very large changes. We've tested layouts, we've tested flows, and it empowers the UX designer to, be, to do what UX should be doing, which is to look at the visitor experience and see how they can improve it for the visitor. So to wrap up, I wanna give you five simple steps of good design thinking process. And some of this you can see in the industry, but it's something that we found works well. When you pair an A-B testing strategist with a UX designer and you have them go through this process together, you get phenomenal results. The first step is to observe. You need to understand the business needs and the needs of the visitor. And so this might involve gathering research, gathering data, looking at analytics, but you need to observe and know the business question you're trying to answer, the business needs of the client, and what the visitors need as well. The second step is to define the problem you're trying to solve. Once the problem has been defined, then it makes it easier to get into creating variations and solutions for that experience. But you want to define the problem in a way that meets the business need by answering the business question, but also a way that is looking at your visitors to solve that problem. The third step after you define the problem is to ideate. You want to generate as many possible solutions to the business problem you've defined. And I want to clarify here that this should be a quick and easy thing. You should be ideating with a quick brainstorm session, maybe a day or two at the most, if you really want to spend some time thinking about it. But the ideation phase and the ideation part of this process is something that isn't taking months and years. You're brainstorming to create a solution to the problem and that can should be done very quickly. Okay, the fourth step is to actually create the solution. So you've observed, you looked at data, you understand the business, you've defined the problem that we're trying to answer and how it might be relevant to the, the end user, the end visitor. You've ideated and thought about all the potential solutions, and now you're going to create the experience with the variations you've decided. It's important before you just start creating that you are sure that you have variations defined with the testing strategies so you can know what you're creating. You want that little boundary around your thinking to say, um, these are the ideas and these are the variations that will answer those ideas and the problem that we're trying to solve. So make sure this phase when you're creating, before you create, you have the variations defined and the test is very clearly defined. Trust me that on this, this will save you a ton of back and forth. And you know, you'll create something and then you don't wanna go back to the testing strategist and be like, oh, hey, here's what I made, let's test it. And they're like, well, this doesn't have a clear business question or this really doesn't answer what we're trying to answer. So make sure that you have the variation defined. And then the fifth and final step is actually just test it. 
And so I want you to see that testing is throughout this entire process. The actual test will give you the data to know how those variations performed and which of those ideas were successful in answering the business need and problem. But testing is the, is the process. This is a UX process, but it's also a testing process. This may look similar to other design processes you've seen. Um, the key here is that you want to make sure that testing is part of this, incorporating each step, and that the outcome is measurable data that you can act on because you did that with the test, so that you can then iterate and keep moving forward. Thanks for joining me today. I hope this was helpful and helped you see how A-B testing and UX design really are a match made in heaven. They should be done together, hand in hand, and that when you succeed with UX, it's because you're also seeing with A-B testing and vice versa. Remember, TestingTheory.com is where professional testers, professional UX designers, and people who want to get the most conversions out of the work that they do come to learn the testing theories and the strategies they need to get more conversions.